the uh, maroon and orange colors of the costume. Did those intentionally match the color of Arkham? You be warned, she's seen the movie a lot. <laughs> I, I, how many times have I seen you at Q&As? This is my third Q&A with you. Third Q&A, but how many times have you seen the movie? Tonight was 35. She's seen oh! the movie 35 times. I mean, I know her. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, no, no, there, there no, it, was it's not really true. There, there was not a conscious connection with that. Um, you know, we get into a rhythm of, of feeling things and and placing, I place changes with a scene, like how this is gonna play and what the background is and things, and that was just, um, it was, it's sort of while Arthur's getting a little darker, the, the, sh the shirts and everything about him is getting a little darker, so that, that was the happy accident, I guess. <laughs> You should be interviewing her too. Yeah. She's been thirty-five times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right in the middle of the lady there, and then the other lady. Uh, for two hours, uh, you show this inconsistencies uh, of human character. Yeah. Uh, for us so-called normal people, uh, we disagree with the behavior uh, we see on the screen. Uh, what is uh, the deeper meaning uh, that you wanted to convey to us? Uh, well, I mean, the, the truth is we, we set out to make a film that illustrates, um, I mean, the simple way of saying it, when Scott Silver and I sat down to write it, we wanted to address the sort of lack of empathy in the world. And the idea is that when we treat each other with this kind of discourse and this kind of dismissiveness, uh, you get the villain you deserve. Um, couple that with mental illness, childhood trauma, uh, lack of love, and these are kind of... Um, the, the 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 recipe for someone like Arthur in this movie. We're not. It's not a. It's not a, a warning. It's just, you know, the goal was to make a villain or a villain origin story, and look at where could Joker come from if we run it through a very realistic lens. But I think what we want you to feel. I mean, to me, but I don't want to impose to some people. I've, I've spoken to many. 21 year olds that think it's a great villain origin story for Joker. And I've spoken to other people that realize the movie's really about the power of kindness. And that's something that we wanted you to feel. But it's a hard question to answer because you kind of want people to have their own experience with the movie. And that belongs to the audience. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And another question right there. I think it, I think it, you know, we're just trying to say it sort of, uh, he's, we don't know where he got his clothes from. He may have had them for years. It, there's a little bit of a juvenile quality to some of Arthur's looks. Um, uh, you know, I'm always trying to tell a story with the clothes and, and I'm glad you came away with that. But yeah, by the time he reaches Joker, he's found his rhythm yeah. in, in, you know, in life and wardrobe. Is it the bathroom scene where he, seems like it's after he's killed the guys on the train where he seems like he's found his center before that he's walking in a very funny well, way yeah he I mean, like finds this grace in it he does have a, it is the first sort of emergence of joker i mean one another thing not to get too heady about it but to go back to the woman in red who was talking about what is the movie saying one of the things we talked a lot about was this sort of Jungian idea that we all walk around with masks on and arthur is actually his mask and as he chips away at the mask throughout the movie revealing his true identity his sort of shadow persona which is joker the person he was meant to be so the bathroom dance is one of the first sort of chipping away at the mask where we feel joker emerging the real guy yeah and you had one more follow-up question yeah, and for either todd or i'm sorry i don't recall jeff
it just rips my heart out. It really does. Mm. What is it like to see that performance to be in front of you? It's just, it's incredible. I think we've had different experiences. I don't want to step on you, but for, for me, I was there on the day with him, and he, Jeff would get the dailies, and Jeff would text me and be like, this is unbelievable. And then, of course, we spent eight months in an editing room staring at it. But on the day, even Mark would be better to speak to, there were days we would just look at each other with our jaws open. I mean, we felt like we were getting something magical. The, the, the scary or intimidating part when you're directing a film with stuff like that, you're going, God, I hope this thing adds up to equal what he's doing. You know what I mean? All of our jobs and the, and the you know, 15 people that aren't here, department heads. I hope we are all bringing our A-game like he is, and, and, and ultimately I think we did, and, and Joaquin thinks we did, he loves the movie, but but yeah, it's, it's awe-inspiring and it's intimidating because you just want to be all working at that level that Joaquin was. Does it make it harder as an editor to figure out, okay, we got a zillion hours and it's gonna be a two hour movie? Well, it's not so much that you have a zillion hours, it's that you have a lot of options because he mm. was everything he was doing was great. Mm. I mean, he might do it in, in five different ways, but yeah. it was all five different great ways. Yeah. I mean, you know. That actually as, sounds, that sounds like it would make it tougher. It does, in, in many ways, because you have to kind of pick a place to start and yeah. then you go, you say, okay, well, this is great, this is great, you take this one piece mm. and then you build around it, create a context, and then go back and reevaluate what you've had. But as far as watching the footage, I mean, I remember sitting in front of in front of the footage on the, the very first day and going, wow, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. He, um, I'll pay you the ultimate compliment, Todd. You made me want to go out and watch a silent movie. Have you seen He Who Laughs? Oh, The Man Who Laughs. The Man Who Laughs. I mean, The Man Who Laughs, you know, everybody loves to talk about Taxi Driver, King of Comedy, and Sidney Lumet's films, Network, and Serpico, but really the first thing that Scott Silver and I talked about the first inspiration for the writing of the script was The Man Who Laughs, yeah. which is a 1928, 20, 20, 27 or 28, yeah, okay. silent film, uh, which turns out also inspired the original writers of Joker, the comic book in 1940, uh, Bill Finger and... Because it was still a new movie, a recent yeah, movie, yeah. and yeah. I sort of heard of it or not heard of it, I literally just watched it last week, oh, it's and, and, you know, the childhood trauma... Yes, that all came from that, yeah. I mean, that... that, that wasn't so much the movies of the 70s that clearly inspired a lot of the aesthetic and the vibe of this film, but a lot of it came from, from The Man Who Laughs, yeah. which not a lot of people pick up on, not a lot of people know that film. It's much more easier to say, oh, King of Comedy or yeah. the Network. But, um, Great movie, it's worth watching. Yeah, there's a, a lot of things that kind of inspired what, what became this. I'm gonna go all the way to 